Hi, I'm Micah. And I'm Lois. So in a healthy, balanced ecosystem, you'll have animals and plants at all these different levels, from the producers, like plants, to apex predators, like the Cooper's hawk. But, you know, sometimes these ecosystems can get unbalanced. Right. And an imbalance happens when a lot of creatures are removed from one trophic level. You know, I actually have a great example of that. So this past year, I was actually working as a scientist at Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming studying wolves. A wolf scientist? That's amazing. You must have seen so many cool animals. What were you guys studying? We were actually studying how wolves kill their prey and how that affects the entire ecosystem as well. So it's pretty much exactly what you, what you students are learning right now. Uh, while I was there, I got to see so many cool animals, including, in addition to wolves, I saw grizzly bears, cougars, uh, I saw plenty of hawks and eagles, ravens, uh, I think I saw a weasel. It's very cute. Um, it, was, it was just spectacular to see all these really interesting animals, especially since a lot of them weren't really there in Yellowstone 50 years ago. Really? Why is that? Well, about a century ago, white settlers were moving out to the Western United States a lot more than previously, and they were coming out here to build farms and ranches, and they saw these apex predators, like the wolves, cougars, and grizzly bears as threats, not only to their livelihoods, but also they thought that they were threats to the ecosystem. Um, so what these settlers did is they killed all of these apex predators. And over time, the government and farmers and hunters and scientists realized that that was a huge mistake. So they've been setting out to correct that mistake. Yeah, I imagine that without the apex predators, the elk, which are big herbivores in that area, if I'm not mistaken, those elk populations must have gotten out of control. Exactly, and because the elk were so overpopulated, they ate so much more plants, uh, so many of those producers, that the entire ecosystem was endangered. So, as a result, after that, scientists, the government, hunters tried to correct that by reintroducing wolves in the 1990s and at the same time grizzly bears and cougars actually came back to the park uh, by themselves. And did these apex predators restore balance to the food web? They probably would have eventually but with the help of hunters killing more elk very very quickly and bringing down the population quickly they were able to reach a stable population uh, in a short amount of time. And now it's all of those populations of elk, wolves, bears, and cougars are relatively stable. And the ecosystem is a lot healthier for it. That's an amazing story. So the uh, ecosystem was out of balance and then thanks to the return of the apex predators, balance was restored. Exactly. And actually the wolves, cougars, and grizzly bears did a lot more than just stabilize the food web. They actually opened up a lot of food for other animals in the park, scavengers. So what I no one thing I noticed when watching the wolves is any time they killed an elk or a bison or other large herbivore in the area, uh, ravens and magpies, these little black and white birds, eagles, like golden eagles and uh, bald eagles, as well as coyotes, would come along and try to pick at the food, whatever the wolves left behind. And so, I don't think an eagle could actually kill an elk. An elk is huge, and an eagle, it's a large bird, but it couldn't take down this giant animal. And so, it actually opened up this food for a lot of these scavengers, and this was an effect that scientists certainly weren't expecting from bringing back these predators to the park. And it's something that they learned from that, from watching it and from looking at these animals. Uh, and it's, it's just really cool to see that. 
and we're going to show us. I think you have a cool video of yeah. it. Yeah, I do. Um, so this is a camera trap. So they put up a camera and have it take video whenever there's movement in its uh, range. And so we see here these golden eagles and a bunch of magpies feeding on a carcass. I think it's an elk carcass. Um, and actually it looks like they're getting scared and they fly away and who is it but a cougar? So this cougar likely killed this elk and left it for a bit and these eagles came and started eating at it, so. Wow, that's so cool. And it really does show how complicated and interconnected these food webs are. I'm sure that scientists still have a lot of work to do to understand the complexities and the intricacies. But now it's time for you to be a scientist. So take the worksheet that you have in your packet and your hand lens and go outside and see what evidence you can find of the food web in your own backyard or in your neighborhood park. Go for it. And really have fun with it. Have fun out there. I'm excited to see what you have.